Hello, my beautiful family. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. I'm back with another content for you guys, which I believe gonna be um, an amazing video for you. You that has a big and good heart. Allah sees everything. He is watching you. And He knows if you are standing for the truth or you don't. And for you that stand for the truth, that is supporting the brothers and sisters for Palestine, I'm pretty sure that Allah has something special for you after this life. 100% sure. And this is what I believe. You don't have to be Muslim, you know, to get this reward. You have to be a real good human. You just need to have a good heart that's what Allah gonna see in the end okay that's what I believe so we're going to watch this is what Allah will give you for supporting Palestine thanks so much don't lose your faith never ever I was Allah had everything Palestine will be free we just have to trust Allah, nothing else. So let's do this. And so we've talked about boycotts, we've talked about protests, we've talked about um, you know speaking out against evil. If you can't change something with your hand, Amin Kumunkar, the very famous hadith, whoever amongst you sees an evil, let them change it with their hand. If they can't do so, then let them, let them change it with their tongue. And if they can't do so, then hate it in their heart. And that is the least of Iman. We've talked about the importance of dua as the weapon of the believer, supplicating for our brothers and sisters. But there's something that a lot of us have been doing, and there's a very specific question that I wanted to ask about this deed. Is there any reward for refuting Israeli propaganda? Simple as that. Is there a reward? Is there actually a reward that can be sought? Is there anything specific from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ about refuting the propaganda of an oppressor, about refuting the propaganda of a liar. And there's this very specific hadith that I wanted to look at in regards to this. Why? Because obviously, you know, we live in a world of echo chambers and algorithms and social media companies that are fueled by all sorts of interests and uh, money to make sure that true narratives don't get out. And if the true narrative wasn't important, then obviously there wouldn't be so much money that was out there to shut down what is the truth. And what we're seeing is this constant uh, battle, this constant strife in the war of public narrative and public opinion between people like you and everyone that's got the power of a cell phone and the power of a laptop that are showing things that legacy media intentionally does not want to be shown. And then the power of those social media platforms trying to shut those down without being too obvious. So, you know, you're doing with your cell phone something that's very interesting because this is unprecedented in history. Is there anything from our deen about the very particular act of that, of trying to shed light on the truth and trying to dispel the propaganda of an oppressor in the public space? And so I come back to this hadith that I'll reflect on a bit today because it has a very specific line here and then a very specific reward and I actually gave a khutbah subhanAllah in November of 2021 called do not aid the oppressor uh, about this very hadith but I talked about one other line of this hadith the hadith is the hadith from Ka'b ibn Ujra radiallahu ta'ala anhu it's an authentic hadith Ka'b ibn Ujra says that kunna tis'a we were nine people with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day Five of us were Arabs, four of us were non-Arabs. Now what's the significance of that line? The significance of that line is twofold. Number one, it indicates the universality of the message that the Prophet ﷺ was going to share, meaning the Prophet ﷺ is not going to share a message that is specific to Qaba'il al-Arab, to the tribes of the Arabs, that's number one. So it suggests the universality of the message. Number two, it suggests the timing within the seerah. When would the Prophet ﷺ have a broader audience? What do you think? When would the Prophet ﷺ have a broader audience? 
at what time period of the seerah? I know you all know, so it's okay. The Madani period, and particularly the last part of it, right? If he's speaking to five Arabs, four non-Arabs, that means that the religion has spread now. You have people that have now come and settled into Medina. And the Prophet ﷺ is towards the end of his own prophetic mission on this earth. And he's telling them about things that are to come. So Ka'b ibn Ujra says that the Prophet ﷺ said to us, nine of us, he said, Isma'u hal sami'tum annahu satakunu ba'di umara man dakhala alayhim fasaddaqahum bi kathabihim wa a'anahum ala ghulmihim falaysa minni wa lastu minhu wa laysa yaridu ala al-hawd. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَدْخُلْ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَمْ يُصَدِّقْهُمْ بِكَذِبِهِمْ وَلَمْ يُعِنْهُمْ عَلَى ظُلْمِهِمْ فَهُوَ مِنِّي وَأَنَا مِنْهُ وَسَيَرِدُ عَلَى الْحَوْدِ I wish I could understand. The Prophet ﷺ said, Listen to me and listen closely. Verily, after me, there will come leaders. And whoever enters upon these leaders, and this is a very important thing because it's mistranslated on many of the hadith websites. All right? If you read many of the hadith websites, it'll say, and believes their lies. But tasdiq, yusaddiquhum, means to affirm their lies. So whoever enters upon an oppressor, a leader, and then affirms their lies, not just believes their lies, affirms their lies, and aids them in their oppression, then they are not from me and I am not from them, and they will have no place from drinking from the hawd, from the fountain of the Messenger on the Day of Judgment. This is exactly what's happening with the Western countries. They lie, lie, they affirm, they confirm the lies, and for them this is like natural, it's like they really believe they are saying the truth because they lie all the time. This is really, really ridiculous and evil. Very specific. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and whoever does not enter upon them and does not affirm their lies and does not aid them in their oppression, then that person is from me and I am from them and they will drink from my hell on the day of judgment. They will drink from my fountain on the Day of Judgment, may Allah make us amongst those who drink from the hand of our beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's an interesting hadith and I want to break it down because there's obviously the line here it is. That, is, that is very pertinent to the idea of dispelling propaganda as a specific deed here. Number one, the hadith gets complicated in regards to whether you're talking about a Muslim leader or an open enemy, right? An opposition someone who's Muslim or someone who's from the opposition, right? Because if it's a Muslim leader and it's within the Ummah, if it's a Khalifa or someone who has Bay'ah, who has uh, you know, allegiance from the Muslims, then there are going to be some differences in the Ahkam, in the rulings that the scholars of Hadith will decipher here. So for one, obviously, of the three things the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, whoever enters upon them, whoever affirms their lies, or whoever aids them in their oppression, the second two of those three are haram no matter what. The second two of those three are haram no matter what. Meaning what? And this is of course what we see that happens today. You have a Muslim leader. Exactly what's happening now with most of the Islamic countries. And you know, of course, what I'm talking about because we have been talking about this for weeks already. Let's keep paying attention because this is a nice content. Who is obviously committing all sorts of atrocities that is supporting an oppression, enabling oh oppression. God. And you have exactly. those that will unfortunately appear with them and actually repeat their propaganda, repeat their lies. And it comes with a very particular type of legitimacy when it has the cloak of a sheikh, the cloak of a alim right, to affirm their lies, right? And by doing so, giving a religious authority, a religious veneer to the oppression that they are committing, all right? So this is not permissible regardless. However, traitors and cowards. However, is it permissible to enter upon a leader, to, to enter upon 
a person who's a Khalifa or a ruler to be in the presence. Absolutely, to be with them is not absolutely prohibited, especially if there's munasaha, if there's some sort of advising towards them or something of that sort. It's not prohibited in and of itself. The question becomes, how much of your behavior towards them is iqrar or inkar? Is in, you know, insinuating support for what they're doing or insinuating at least the distancing from their evil, even if it's by ishara, if it's by your, your deeds, your actions, right? So singing a nasheed to, a, to an oppressor is probably <laughs> you know, not something that would fall into this, right? Or, or praising them while overlooking their deeds doesn't fall into this. But you, know, you, you give a dua or you're present in the same gathering or there is something that takes place, you're in the same space and you're giving them advice, that's not enough to disqualify someone. And that's important in this day and age where it's very easy to just take a picture out of context and then completely delegitimize you know, a, a, a person who's the head of like a, a, a group of scholars in some Muslim country and to say this person has no legitimacy anymore. That's not fair either, right? So there are extremes in this and there, there's important nuance here that is to be derived when it comes to the first one. This obviously does not apply when you're talking about someone who's an open enemy uh, to the Muslims. This is not talking about Benjamin Netanyahu or someone who shamelessly would take what they call faith washing trip to Israel and pose with the president or pose with the prime minister and say, you know, I was just building a relationship. I was giving Netanyahu nasiha. Netanyahu doesn't need your nasiha, trust me. Or I was giving him advice, talking about how we can build uh, peace. It doesn't count and that is absolutely disqualifying and disgraceful. But what about the second two things? A'anahum ala zulmihim. To aid them in their oppression. So I'm going to leave the, the middle one for last, because it's the one that's most pertinent to this discussion. A'anahum ala zulmihim goes back to the boycott discussion that we were having. And Imam al-Marwadi rahimahullah, he says, when Imam Ahmad rahimahullah was in prison, the prison guard came to him. And he said, Ya Aba Abdullah, al-hadith al-ladhi ruya fi, fi, fi dhulm, wa fi dhulma wa a'waniyam. He said, the hadith that's narrated about al-dhulma, about the oppressors, wa a'waniyam, those that support them. He says, is it Sahih? Is it authentic? Imam Ahmad rahimahullah said yes. Imagine Imam Ahmad's in prison. The prison guard is asking him, is the hadith about those who aid the oppressor authentic or not? He said yes. So the sajjan, the prison, the prison uh, guard asked, فَأَنَا مِنْ أَعْوَانَ الظَّلَمَ So am I from the people that aid the oppressor? So Imam Ahmad responded to him and he said, أَعْوَانُ الظَّلَمَ مَنْ يَأْخُذُ شَعْرَكْ وَيَغْسِلُ ثَوْبَكْ وَيُصْلِحُ طعامك. He said, no, the aid of an oppressor, the one who aids an oppressor in your situation okay. is your barber, the one who makes your food, the one who buys and sells from you. He says, As for you, you are actually an oppressor. You're, you're, you're way worse in this hadith than you think. The one who actually deals with you and, and just supports you in your day to day is from A'wan al dhulama that the Prophet ﷺ is talking about, from those who aid an oppressor. There's another famous story about Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah, which is also near that the khayyat, the, a, a tailor came to him, and he mentioned that, you know, I, I tailor garments for the Sultan, who's clearly an oppressor. So do I count amongst the dhulama? Do I count amongst the oppressors? And he says, بَلْ أَنْتَ مِنَ الظَّلَمَةِ أَنفُسِهِمْ Rather, you are one of the oppressors. And this shows you this idea again of not participating in any way. So it goes back to the discussion we were having about boycotts, about the religiosity of this affair, of not purchasing, of not partaking, when we can prevent ourselves from anything that could be used towards the oppression of our brothers and sisters. Let's use an example here like the President Erdogan, the Turkish President. If he is break down the oil supply that goes to Israel, he's helping the brothers and sisters. This is gonna be bad for the Israeli government. But for some reason, he don't do that. So that means he is supporting Israel, at least for me. I don't know what you guys think. He is aiding Israel against Palestine. 
I think this is a nice example that we we can put here on the table, right? Don't you guys agree with me? Or strengthen the case or the position Should boycott. of those that oppress our brothers and sisters. Now, the middle one is the interesting one, which is to affirm their lies or to deny their lies in public. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned to us the virtue of kalima tu haqq in the Sultan al -Jahr. To speak a word of truth in the face of an oppressor. The connection between speaking a word of truth in the face of the oppressor and this is that here you are not talking to the oppressor directly, you're talking outside of the oppressor, you're facing outward and you are dispelling their lies. So speaking a truth to their face or dispelling a falsehood to their audience. To the That's what we are trying to do here, family, every single day, every single day. And I will keep doing that, not just with the Palestinian people, for any situation that I see that is wrong, okay? Until my last breath. This is the truth. You are what you are. If you're good, you're always going to stand with the truth. If you evil, you're going to stand with the lies and you're going to have to pay for that. Those that are on the other side, this is a powerful connection to what the Messenger of Allah is predicting about the times that come because we know that as time goes on, the standards of truth and the standards of truth bearers both go down. So how is the ulama mentioned? Both the level of fusuq, you know, Allah says in the Quran, if a wicked person comes to you with news, then verify it. Both the wickedness, the standard of wickedness, and the standard of verification wither away over time. Right? So, what would have made you a fasiq back then who is not trustworthy, right? You'd be considered one of the awliya today, one of the greatest friends of Allah today. And the levels of verification have also gone down. So it takes one person. How many times, by the way? And I'm just being real here because I see it in our community too. Sheikh, did you hear what happened? What happened? And then like some ridiculous outlandish news. I'm not going to say I heard it tonight before Isha, but you get the point. All right? Not tonight before Isha, by the way, just so no one feels targeted here, right? Where did you hear from? I saw it on WhatsApp. Someone passed it on. And why do you think it's real? Well, because the person that forwarded it Right, is a good Muslim, is someone who seems to be trustworthy. And that person, of course, forwarded it from someone else who forwarded it from someone else and then forwarded it from someone else. And the next thing you know, you had, you know, like someone speaking Arabic on American Idol, uh, you know, saying free Palestine and, and just all sorts of things. It's like, where did this even come from? But the standards of, of both the truth bearer as well as what we consider to be verified and true have gone down so much. So it takes one person to say something for a lie to spread, especially if you're considered somewhat reliable in your community. Now to dispel propaganda, to actually do the opposite of what the Prophet is saying here, that I will not affirm the lie of an oppressor, I will not affirm the lie of a propagandist, even if that means I'm going to speak to my 10, 15, 50, 500 people. But when the oppressor lies, I will be there to dispel that lie. And subhanAllah, what you have happening right now in the world is a chorus of that. You have a bunch of people that don't have the power of the machine, but have the power of their numbers, that immediately point out the ridiculousness of the propaganda that's coming out of Israel. I'm just, let's talk about how silly and ridiculous their propaganda is. That's what we're doing here, fam. That's what we're doing here. Be proud because you're doing a good job. Right? They have lied so many times at this point, but I want you to imagine a world where social media didn't exist. Right? The lies would have been run with and there would have been no counter voice, no counterbalance. But here, subhanAllah, we have a connection to this very particular line. Yes. To not affirm a liar, either 
actively or passively, and to instead say that this is kadib, this is a lie, and to respond with the truth. Now, here's the interesting thing about this hadith and how it all comes together at the end. The Messenger of Allah says, I am from that person and they are from me. And that is a person that will drink from my hand at the hell, at the fountain. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those people who drink from the hell of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? What's the connection here? There are a few things that the scholars mention. Number one, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ibghuni fi du'afa, find me amongst the weak. And of the downtrodden, the lowest category, or rather the highest category, right, of the du'afa, of the weak ones and the downtrodden ones are al mazlumin There are al masakin there are fuqara, there are people that are poor, there are people that are destitute, there are people that are orphans. The lowest in terms of class, the highest in terms of rank, would be al mazlumin would be those who are oppressed. The Prophet ﷺ, when he was alive, is saying to the Sahaba, find me amongst the downtrodden. fi du'afa. You're gonna look for me, you will find me amongst them. هَلْ تُرْزَقُونَ وَتُنْصَرُونَ إِلَّا بِضُعَفَائِكُمْ Are you supported or given victory except by the way that you treat your downtrodden ones, except by the way that you treat especially your oppressed ones? Are you going to be given victory and help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except through that measure? And so one of the connections that the scholars mention is that those who would have found themselves in closest proximity to the Prophet ﷺ when he was alive will find themselves in closest proximity to the Prophet ﷺ in the hereafter. And that's a powerful connection. So when he mentions ﷺ, the closest people to him are the people of the best akhlaq, the best character. The Prophet ﷺ had the best character. So if you wanted to be with him, then you wanted to emulate his character as much as possible so you would naturally be in close proximity to him وسلم, in this life and therefore in the hereafter as well. So it's one of the connections that the ulama mentioned here is that the Prophet وسلم, himself would have been amongst the oppressed. The second one is that those who were in proximity to the Prophet وسلم, in this life will be closest to him والسلام, in the next life. And the third one is in regards to the difficulty. Uh, the severity of taking this type of a stance. Now here's where I really want us to take a moment inshallah ta'ala and relate the moment that we're in right now. Everything that's going to come our way as a community here in the United States especially, look they just passed a resolution in Congress today that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. Anti so congratulations, I assume all of you are now anti-Semitic. All right, because I assume everyone in here is anti-Zionist, and if you're not, then ma'asalama, please go to another masjid. All right, anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. What's next? Losing your job, you're an anti-Semite. Your organizations, your institutions. There is a there is a risk here, and we can't be silly and think that this isn't moving in a certain direction. Where we have to have hikmah, we have to be wise. We also have to be steadfast. Right? We have to be wise, but we have to be steadfast. And I want you to think in the mind of a young companion who hears from the Prophet ﷺ that the way that you act in regards to this oppressor is going to determine your being from me or my being from you and your proximity to me at the hawt, at the fountain of the Messenger ﷺ. That the way that you act when you see an oppressor who by necessity, according to this hadith, is someone who's trying to get people to affirm their lies and is trying to get people to aid them in their oppression. Oppressors rarely act, if ever, act alone, right? So they're naturally looking for people to affirm their lies, their media, and they're looking for people to support them in insidious ways. If you're a Sahabi of the Prophet ﷺ and you hear, by the way, do you want to be at my hell? You want to be at my fountain on the Day of Judgment? You want to be drinking from my hand? This is what you do? Or you want to not be near me on the Day of Judgment? This is how you act? Then your ears are perking and your heart is fully inclined to everything the Messenger of Allah is about to say. You understand the severity of it when the Prophet ﷺ says that? So clearly, 
the greatness of the reward is in accordance with the severity of the trial. And yes, yes, subhanAllah, you know, the, the most difficult ghurbah that the Muslims ever faced. I want you to think about this. The most difficult ghurbah, the most difficult estrangement and disillusionment the Muslims ever faced. أَتَقْتُلُونَ رَجُلًا أَنْ يَقُولَ رَبِّيَ اللَّهِ that you would kill a man just because he says, my Lord is Allah, and because he refuses to affirm the greatest kadib, the greatest lie, which is that the Prophet ﷺ is not a messenger of Allah, that he is all of the names that they were calling him. That was the hardest time, right? Where affirming a lie meant literally saying things about the Prophet ﷺ or saying things about Allah and speaking the most simple truth of La ilaha illallah was enough to earn you persecution. And as we go to times of estrangement, SubhanAllah, you're living in a time where speaking the most basic truths about fitrah, about what people know, about the humanity of children, women, innocent civilians, where you know, the eyes are very clear as to what they're seeing, could put you at risk with your job, could put our Islamic organizations at risk as the laws become more draconian and more McCarthyist. And it's going to take us to have a certain type of attitude as a community. So what I'm saying is, be wise, but read yourself into the hadith. That alhamdulillah, you have the ability to call out the lies when you see them, in whatever capacity. And I know we're already seeing the fatigue, subhanAllah, in regards to this. Two months and we're already getting tired. Renew it by reading these ahadith sometimes and saying to yourself, I want to be that person who does not affirm the lies that are coming out from this propaganda machine and I will speak these truths and I will seek with that Allah's pleasure. I will seek that position with the Prophet because if the Messenger of Allah was amongst us in his physical proximity in this dunya, we know that the Prophet ﷺ would be with our brothers and sisters who are being oppressed right now. What amazing content. Wow. What a amazing content. Family, this is it. Uh, you want to make sure when someone's lying, when he starts to create situations and story, they want you to believe that the lie is true. It, it is exactly like that but when you tell the truth you don't have to worry about create situations or story for the people believe the truth is true itself and nothing gonna change that so let's keep standing for the truth for the brothers and sisters for Palestine don't lose your faith I hope you guys Pay attention for this content because it's really, really amazing. And it is exactly what's happening right now. Okay? Be strong. I always trust Allah. And we're going to be fine. And if, if you are the one who has a good heart and stand for the truth, Allah is going to have a great reward for you. That's for sure. Allah bless you all and I see you guys next time. Palestine free. Thank you.